Welcome to lecture 15 of ECE 4305 Software Defined Radio Systems and Analysis. In this lecture, we will begin our coverage of multi carrier modulation by reviewing some of the fundamentals regarding this data transmission scheme. So, as a communications engineer, uh, one has several degrees of freedom when it comes to designing different types of digital transceivers that can communicate information from a transmitter to a receiver over a channel. We can manipulate the dimensions of time, frequency, and space in order to arrange uh, data in such a way that it meets some sort of performance metric. Uh, and, and, and that really varies on what sort of application we are targeting. For instance, if you want to transmit your data over some sort of uh, communications medium that uh, in the end has a low probability of interference, low probability of detection by others uh, who are looking out for that signal, and an immunity to narrowband jamming, then there's a technique called spread spectrum where the data is reorganized in such a way that it possesses characteristics that achieve uh, the best possible performance with respect to what we're looking for in terms of a transmission scheme. On the other hand, Suppose you want your information to have a high level of robustness against uh, the possibility of error, especially in dispersive environments, and also to support high data rates, well then multi-carrier modulation is, uh, is the data transmission scheme for you. Uh, in most cases, the amount of information that can be transmitted um, is usually a constant, but it really depends on how it's organized and distributed across space, time, and frequency. So one key relationship that, that you have to keep in mind is that um, in digital communications, um, there is a relationship between the symbol period, T, and the signal bandwidth, B, where uh, essentially uh, they're inversely related to each other. In this case, uh, the bandwidth is equal to one over the symbol period. So this proposes one of, one of several engineering design trade-offs between that symbol period and the si signal bandwidth. Because as you know, the shorter your, the shorter your signal, a symbol period, the more symbols you can cram into a unit duration of time, which means that you get more information across the channel. On the other hand, the, the smaller your symbol period, the higher your bandwidth. And what that means is, um, this means your transmission channel actually increases in bandwidth, which potentially could overlap or spill over into adjacent transmissions in other bands. So as a result, what we want to do is can we manipulate how that information is distributed across frequency and across time to yield the best possible performance for a specific application? So what multi-carrier modulation does, it's, it's essentially a divide and conquer strategy. So um, in the past, what folks have done when they transmitted uh, information and, and they wanna transmit a lot of information is they take the symbol period, they shrink it as, as small as possible, and they cram in as many symbols per unit time in order to get it across. Well, that obviously translates into a very high bandwidth. And, 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 and as a result, um, you, you, know, you get all those symbols at the receiver if it's intercepted, and then the receiver proceeds to decode them and, and translate them back into the binary information. Um, however, um, the problem with that approach is that um, when you have very short symbol periods, um, especially in dispersive environments, environments where there's a lot of echo um, or reverberation, um, you're, you're going to need rather complex techniques at the receiver in order to extract out the desired symbols and remove all those echoes or all those copies or all that reverberation. Um, and that can get very costly very quickly, right? So what multi-carrier modulation does is it's divide and conquer. What it does is it takes that high-speed signal and demultiplexes it into essentially a collection of several low-speed parallel transmissions. And what it does is it then modulates them to adjacent frequency bands. So think about it. So low-speed means very large T, which means very small B. 
which means, in other words, very long symbol periods, which mean very small bandwidths, which means that if you have a bunch of these low data transmission, uh, low speed data transmissions, that you can have several of them in parallel, in frequency and time at the same time. In fact, it's possible that you can transmit the same amount of information as that case where you have very small symbol periods and a very large bandwidth. For the same amount of bandwidth, you can transmit, so let's say for the same amount of bandwidth, you can transmit n parallel narrow band transmissions at the same time that all have n times the symbol period relative to the high speed uh, transmission that we were talking about before. So all we're doing is we're reorganizing the information, the binary information, uh, instead of one single carrier high speed data transmission, instead into several or multiple low data rate carriers or multi-carriers that use the same bandwidth and the information rate is exactly the same, but as we'll see in a little bit later, there are a lot of advantages to arranging data in that way, um, including this concept of divide and conquer, where what happens is if we transmit data in, in, in pieces across frequency, we can tailor the uh, digital uh, communication system um, to and optimize across frequency and time, which is way, uh, which in the end might yield far less complex receiver implementations relative to a single carrier implementation. So let's see how that looks like uh, in both time and in frequency. Okay, so let's look at single carrier, multi carrier waveforms. Okay, so a single carrier waveform. Lots of fluctuations over a short period of time. Okay, so basically the uh, symbol period, we'll call it T1, it's very small. And so as a result, we know the relationship to the bandwidth and frequency to be inversely proportional. So very small transmit periods means very wide bandwidths, as we can see here. Now if we take multi-carrier, Let's say a single subcarrier of that multi-carrier transmission will have a much longer symbol period. In fact, if let's say we have n subcarriers, or we we take a single carrier signal and we um, uh, 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 demultiplex it into n subcarriers, um, the symbol period will actually be. Um, n times as long as the single carrier uh, uh, waveform that we got it from. And as a result, this will also translate into bandwidth because it will be the symbol period for, the, uh, for each subcarrier will be n times as long, which means it will be one nth the bandwidth as the single carrier waveform. So what you've got in the frequency domain is this small sliver of a subcarrier, right? And then you'll have another one and another one. So you're going to have n of these. And the funny thing is the bandwidth, overall bandwidth, the data is preserved. The bandwidth turns out will be equal, the same. It's just how the data is organized across frequency. And what's also interesting to note is that let's say if your uh, channel is dispersive in the time domain, so that's your h of t, notice how uh, the dispersiveness spills over from a single symbol period to multiple, and that causes problems because then the receiver will have to figure out which one's the correct one. In this case, in the multi-carrier, we don't even leave the first symbol period. So uh, that dispersiveness does not have as much of an impact. Um, also in the frequency domain, if let's say our channel has a non-flat frequency response, which could cause distortion, we can treat that on an individual basis per subcarrier, which is much more easier, a lot easier than let's say doing it on a single bandwidth. So now that we saw the differences between the spatio-temporal uh, representation of single carrier, multi-carrier waveforms, let's ask ourselves why multi-carrier transmission? 
So I kind of alluded to this uh, a little bit earlier um, as to why it would be better to redistribute the information across frequency and time uh, in a multi-carrier framework. And, and, and the primary reason is delay spread. So I was talking about dispersive or uh, echo-like environments. So the transmitter would send out um, a signal, let's say over the air, so wirelessly. And it emanates and it reflects off surfaces. And then the receiver is picking up multiple copies, echoes, if you will, of this transmitted waveform uh, on top of noise being added to it. And what happens is when your transmission, if it's a single carrier transmission with a very small T, which means it's a very wide bandwidth, um, so a lot of data over unit time, what happens is this echo becomes a very serious problem because for such a, ne uh, such a short pe time period, you have multiple copies all over the place and this can potentially confuse the receiver. Now uh, we call this de um, delay spread. Okay, and the lar uh, when we have a delay spread that is as large as the symbol period or larger, this, beca this becomes very problematic. On the other hand, when we create multi-carrier waveforms, our symbol period is one nth of the equivalent single carrier symbol period, uh, period. Actually, sorry, n times as long as the single carrier um, uh, symbol period. So as a result, um, if we had a dispersive channel before and a delay spread of, um, of, uh, of, of whatever duration, what ends up happening is that now with, an, with a multi-carrier transmission, the, delay, the, the symbol period is so much longer that the influences of that delay spread are negligible or much, much less than before. So that's the beauty of this divide and conquer approach is we, we redistribute across space and time and free, sorry, frequency and time the, the, the information such that it's communicated in such a way that the dispersiveness of the channel is not felt as readily. Furthermore, if we do this divide and conquer, imagine if you have N narrowband transmissions. They are so much easier to equalize rather than one very high speed data transmission. You can also tailor um, the transmit power and the bit rate per subcarrier, each one of these narrowband transmissions, such that you can get the optimal performance in terms of the most bits and, the, and, the, and, and a suitable amount of power um, per uh, transmitted symbol. Um, and, and in fact, multi-carrier modulation is used extensively in a lot of high-speed data applications, such as DSL modems, Wi-Fi, WiMAX, um, uh, uh, 4G cellular communications. And, and, and this is because of its capabilities of yielding relatively straightforward receiver designs that can readily handle the dispersive nature of a lot of wireless environments. Okay, so uh, let's, let's see how a multi-carrier transmitter works. So, so we talk about divide and conquer. How do we actually pull this off? So the way the multi-carrier transmitter works essentially is you take your high-speed input signal, X of N, it goes into something called a demultiplexer or demux into N parallel realizations. Okay, so there are N of them. Each subcarrier is modulated into some sort of symbol. So we do a mod, 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 mod. And furthermore, we upsample such that spectrally we use one nth the spectrum and we have a law of replicas of which what we do is we take all those replicas and pick one where we make sure that each subcarrier has a replica that does not correspond in fre center frequency location to any other replica from another subcarrier. So everyone, no one's overlapping with each other. And we, we do this using something called the synthesis filter bank. G0 of N, G1 of N, G2 of n all the way to G n minus 1 of n. And then lastly, we sum these parallel realizations together and send them over the air as our composite multi-carrier waveform. And now, how does a receiver intercept and decode 
than multi-carrier transmission once it's been picked up. At the receiver, we take that composite waveform. Like suppose we're picking it up by an antenna, and the first thing we do is we decompose it using something called the analysis filter bank. And so these pick out those replicas that were stitched together. We 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 pick them out. So F not of n, F one of n, F two of n, all the way to f n minus one of n. Perfect. And so now, given that, the next thing we do is we take that replica and we want to um, uh, take that signal and uh, downsample it. We expand the spectrum of that replica by a factor of n. Okay. Okay, now, um, because the channel could have corrupted that signal, we sometimes can use equalizers on each subcarrier. So we have W0 of n, W1 of n, W2 of n, and W n minus 1 of n. And what these guys do is they will remove an, uh, any sort of distortion that has been introduced by the channel, like dispersiveness and such. We then demodulate the resulting equalize, because these are equalizers, equalizers, the symbol waveforms, we do a demod per subcarrier. And last but not least, we multiplex them together. We use something called a mux. And this creates a recreated high speed transmission X of N hat. So based on these diagrams, we have several observations that we can make. Okay, so first of all, the data rate of X of N decreases by a factor of N when we're converting it into N parallel subbands. And that makes sense because we're demultiplexing it, right? And then the upsampling is performed to compress the spectra by a factor of N as well as generate replicas at periodic intervals. And then what happens is each subband is filtered by a bandpass synthesis filter, GI of N, and, and all of those um, replicas uh, that are filtered out at each different unique center frequency are stitched together and sent over the air, uh, where the receiver has um, a corresponding bank of analysis filters that extract out the corresponding replica per branch. And in some cases, we might employ equalizers on each subcarrier in order to correct for any sort of distortion caused by the environment. So let's, let's take a closer look in the frequency domain of how this all works. So how, how does spectrally all of this look like? Well, what ends up happening is suppose in the, um, uh, in, in the original uh, subcarrier transmission, frequency wise looks something like this. So let's say it looks like a, a weird triangle and let's say the subcarrier indexes that correspond in frequency look something like okay so that's our original subband and then what happens is remember we do some sort of upsampling by a factor of n let's say n is equal to 8 because we have 8 subcarriers zoom so what this will do is we're going to have at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We're going to have replicas. So we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We're going to have the identical thing compressed by a factor of 8, and it will be filling up the spectrum. So this is spectrum, okay? But uh, the carry indices are indicated. Now, what happens is, um, suppose that... Uh, we filter using a census filter G1 of N. So we take this guy and throw away the rest such that it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We only have one of the replicas, and that's what we're going to send over the air. 
And then at the same time, across all the subcarriers, we begin filling in the other replicas. Like, let's say this is for subcarrier two. This is for subcarrier three. Uh, this is subcarrier four. Um, this is subcarrier five, and, and so on and so forth. So, so what ends up happening is that we have all these different types of representations of signals and such. And so in the end, we, what we were doing is we're stitching them all together such that like this guy came from this subcarrier and we do the same operations on all the subcarriers. And then we create this guy here is our composite multi-carrier signal that gets transmitted over the channel.